Hello and welcome to your monthly update on the Covidence UK study. My name is Adrian Martineau, I'm the Chief Investigator based here at Queen Mary University of London. So in today's webinar, what I want to do is develop the uh, data that we presented to you last month and take a look at the profile of people who are reporting long COVID in the Covidence UK cohort. So first of all, let's take a look at how frequently people who've had COVID-19 report long COVID after their disease in the Covidence UK cohort. So of the 19,700 people who signed up so far, uh, 7,484 of you have had at least one episode of swab test or antibody test positive COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2 infection. And of these, around one in five, 21% to be exact, reported having long COVID in at least one of the monthly questionnaires thereafter. Now, there is some controversy over what duration of symptoms actually formally constitutes long COVID, but there's a consensus emerging, if you like, that uh, people are generally said to have long COVID if they've had symptoms for at least 12 weeks after their initial SARS-CoV-2 infection. So if we then drill down and look just at those people who've reported long COVID in at least three questionnaires after their initial illness, that's 9%. So there's quite a substantial number of people who report symptoms longer than four weeks, but less than 12 weeks, as you can see. Now, if we just drill down and focus on people who've reported long COVID uh, for at least 12 weeks, we can see that the duration of symptoms varies quite a bit. Um, around a quarter of people have a relatively short uh, duration of symptoms of less than five months. Another quarter of people have symptoms lasting five to 10 months. Another quarter of people have symptoms lasting 11 to 17 months. And then another quarter have symptoms lasting longer than 17 months. So quite a protracted uh, illness in one quarter of people there. In terms of the symptoms which are most common, there's first of all, I think the first thing to highlight is the very wide spectrum of symptoms that people are reporting. But what I've done here is list them in decreasing order of frequency. So at the very top there is tiredness and fatigue, which 90% of people report at least once who uh, among those who reported long COVID. Uh, second, are pains in muscles or joints, then problems with sleeping, then come so-called symptoms of what people are calling brain fog, so difficulty concentrating and memory problems. Uh, then respiratory symptoms like coughing are at 66%, lightheadedness or dizziness, shortness of breath, problems with the sense of taste or smell that are lasting in around 54% of people. Uh, palpitations, unusual sweating, abdominal pain and diarrhea uh, occurring in about half of people reporting long COVID. And then symptoms like voice changes, hair loss and long term ringing or buzzing in the ears, also known as tinnitus, uh, reported in around one third of those people who have who are experiencing long COVID after their initial illness. So who other people in Covidence UK who are most at risk of reporting long COVID after their initial illness. Well, first of all, let's look at the effect of age. And what you can see here is like an inverted U shaped curve. So uh, basically showing that people in the 40 to 49 year age group are the ones who are most frequently reporting long COVID after their initial illness. Uh, and then those who are either younger or particularly older than that, having a much lower risk of reporting long COVID after their initial illness. And this fits uh, somewhat with national and international data on this question. Um, large data sets from um, the REACT study in the UK have shown that the 50 to 59 year age group uh, in that study was the one that had the highest risk of developing long COVID after an initial infection. So the spectrum is slightly younger among COVID in UK participants than in that study. 
um, with regard to the effect of gender on risk of long COVID. People uh, who were female had a slightly higher risk uh, of reporting long COVID after their initial illness than males, something around 22% versus 19%. Although this is a relatively subtle difference because we've got big numbers, uh, it does attain statistical significance. So we can say that this difference isn't arising by chance alone. Again, the gender difference that we're seeing here in COVID in COVIDence is a bit smaller than uh, that's seen in other studies in the UK and internationally, but it's in the same direction. Uh, those other studies reporting uh, a slightly higher risk associated with being female versus being male. Where our findings are firmly in keeping with those of other studies in the UK and internationally is where we look at the effect of disease severity. Um, and we've looked at this in two different ways. First of all, according to symptom severity from the reports you've given us, showing that people whose initial illness was more severe are at significantly higher risk of getting long term symptoms, as perhaps one would expect. And this is really highlighted here by looking at data from people who required hospitalisation for their initial illness as opposed to those who didn't. Uh, it's about a four in five chance that people who are hospitalised report long COVID after their illness compared with a one in five chance of those who weren't hospitalised. So what's the bottom line here? Um, what we can say is that around one in five or 21 percent of COVID in UK participants reported long COVID at least once. Uh, with around one in 11 reporting symptoms lasting at least 12 weeks after their initial illness. You can say that there was a very wide range of different symptoms that are being experienced, uh, the most common of which were fatigue, muscle aches and sleeping problems, uh, with brain fog uh, symptoms also being pretty common. And when we looked uh, initially at risk factors, we saw that long COVID following the initial illness was more common among women versus men. It's not a huge effect, but it was statistically significant. People aged 40 to 49 years with those younger and older having a lower risk and people who had more severe disease, be that in terms of more severe symptoms at the time of the illness or looking at a very hard outcome, whether or not people were hospitalised for their initial illness or not. So this really uh, represents the second step, the first step being presented in last week's um, monthly webinar of, of our uh, deep dive into the long COVID data and uh, Julia Vivaldi, our lead statistician, is now uh, hard at work um, looking in more detail at the data that you're sharing with us, which continues to accumulate every month, I'm pleased to say. So thank you very much for your continued efforts with the monthly questionnaire. Um, what she's looking at now is looking at other risk factors for getting long COVID, particularly other underlying illnesses, uh, and then building a more sophisticated model than the one I've shown you today um, with full adjustment for confounders to see which factors are independently associated with risk of getting long COVID. She's also using more sophisticated analysis techniques, um, a, a technique called principal components analysis to identify symptom clusters to see if there are people who are getting different types of long COVID uh, and then developing that work to see if the people who are getting the different symptom groups end up having a different long term outlook in terms of their prognosis and how long their symptoms last. And then she'd be running analyses to look at factors that are associated with shorter versus longer duration of symptoms. And one of the major focuses of that, of course, is on the things that people are doing to try and improve their symptoms, be they nutritional supplements, graded exercise, uh, all of these things which we're capturing in the questionnaire. So uh, that's all for now. I'll be sure to update you again next month on our progress. But I'd just like to close by thanking all of you for your continued support for the study and for continuing to contribute the valuable data we get every month. And also to Julia and to Paul Pfeffer, our consultant respiratory physician who's advising us on the long COVID analyses at Bart's Health NHS Trust. So it's goodbye from me until next month. And thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you.